I don't know about you, but I've always wanted like a flying vehicle, a UFO. I reckon it would be sweet. Imagine just like hopping on a UFO and then flying to some other country and then you, you walk out of it and like some poor little ethnic villager just sees some kind of scruffy looking guy just casually walking out of some, you know, glowing uh, space vehicle that either worships you as some kind of god or be absolutely horrified. I'm sure it'd be pretty funny to see. Anyway, it kind of brings into question the idea of aliens and are they real and all this kind of stuff. And uh, if you've looked into the flat earth, which realistically, um, it looks like there is some kind of force field or dome. You know, whether it's made out of solid oxygen or it's uh, some kind of like electromagnetic force field which stops us from essentially going outside of the Earth's atmosphere, at least in a physical form, that seems to be a thing. Now, that would kind of imply that anything that isn't from Earth would have to uh, become non-physical temporarily or be a non-physical entity. So that's kind of a big thing on aliens. <clears throat> of course, there are ideas of uh, the North, because apparently we're not actually told what really is at the North. Supposedly there's other continents uh, or countries or something up there, which you can see on old maps. And of course, if the Earth is flat, you know, flat, of course, hills and valleys and ravines, included, you know what I mean, right? Then beyond Antarctica, there is more land. And do the people or the beings who live, if there are beings who live in like the, the deep, deep south areas beyond the ice wall, do they have like hyper technology or are they primitive people? Uh, are they the UFOs that are seen? Because supposedly people will see disc-like objects. Usually they seem to be spiritual in nature, as in, or they seem to glow uh, and give off light. And of course, an interesting thing is if you understand, if you've ever seen, if you look up a vacuum, metal being electrified in a vacuum, and you think the, the Earth's, that field, that force field that I said, or that, that oxygen dome, would be keeping in the atmosphere. Because if it had a hole in it, it'd, it'd just whoosh, go straight out, right? Like space is meant to be a vacuum, right? And then there's this idea, or it's got some, maybe some certain rare gases or something. You look at like a star, and a star, it, it, it seems, it looks just like one of those, uh, bits of metal glowing in a vacuum or, or in, in like a rare atm rare um, gas atmosphere. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, the, so the UFO, you know, some people say they've seen them and some people say that they look like, like, like rainbow discs that just fly and they're super fast. And um, not to say they're all like that, you know, maybe, maybe you've seen one yourself and maybe it was more physical. I know I've seen two weird things in the sky and they're probably not UFOs, but I'll just tell you anyway. The first was really beautiful. It was um, a shooting star. And again, uh, what is a shooting star if, you know, if nothing can breach the, the dome? Uh, some people say it's part of the dome coming off. Other people say it's military experiments, which is possible. I remember it was like a, a, a green or blue, maybe, um, light that was just trailing along and it had like a, like a tail to it. It was very beautiful. Uh, saw it one night when I was outside training. The second one, this one I still don't really understand because my memory is a little foggy about it. But I saw this thing, it looked like a 
dinosaur or dragon or something. Uh, you know, now that I think about it, was it, <laughs> was it a dragon? Supposedly, the, the whole dinosaur thing is, is, is kind of fake. Um, what is more realistic, because when you look into, like, most of the bones are falsely manufactured, but there are bones, like giant bones of certain creatures found. And there are historical records of dragons. Uh, China has, China really treated these things as if they were real. Even in Europe, hundreds of years ago, or a thousand, two years ago, so or so, these were seen as real things. They were probably about maybe like bigger than a hippo, you know, like bigger than a truck or something. And uh, you know, people would slay them for great honor, and they were, they were killed a lot. And apparently, you know, if you ate them or you made them into medicine, it just it should be really good. It's just so much energy, so much like nutrients in it, right? Did I just see a drone that looked like a dragon? Because it looked like it had weird wings, like a uh, dragon wings. I don't know. It didn't seem to move its wings at all. It just kind of flew through the air. So uh, whether that was just like a a drone really up in the air or some new airplane or even a dragon I don't know <laughs> but that's just those are the two things I've seen I don't think I've ever seen a UFO um, I've had weird dreams but I don't think they were real I think they were just dreams are UFOs southerners who have hyper technology well unfortunately <sighs> Realistically, I think UFOs are probably just military craft. I think the majority of UFOs that are out there are probably just military craft. That's not to say all of them. It's quite possible some of them are like entities from beyond this earth or even just beyond, you know, down south or up north or, or maybe some kind of inner earth or, you know, I don't know, something like that, right? Yeah, there's that whole idea of like more advanced people who screwed up their genetics and now they have to, you know, try to take them back from regular humans and kind of interbreed and all that kind of crap. But that's real, I don't know. But I think the majority of this stuff is just military craft. And if you look into aeroplanes, uh, excuse me, uh, yeah, aeroplanes and also jets. See, jets are essentially UFOs. Modern jets, modern military aircraft is essentially just a UFO because of how aerodynamic and just incredibly engineered and just phenomenal they are. They really are impressive. And since realistically 100 years ago, there was research into things like electromagnetic levitation. If you know about the lifter, the lifter is a little kind of like a toy, a scientific experiment. Essentially, when you have high voltage and you connect two wires together, you, you see that, that the zapping, the plasma, the, the lightning bolt, right? That's like fire, you can think, like electrical fire. When you pull them further apart, there will be a corona discharge, that glow, which is what people see. The glow of the UFO is is, is a kind of electromagnetic corona discharge. It looks like this, this blue, this blue, oh, that's interesting, blue glow, right? So a fascinating thing is that when you put the wires together, the high voltage wires together, you get fire. When you pull it apart, you get air because what happens is that the air, it's called ionic wind. It rushes from, I think from the, is it the positive to the negative? I'm not sure, we'll figure it out. Basically you get a rush of air. And um, I think there were experiments about a hundred years ago and then maybe 60 years ago and all these kinds of times. 
uh, by researchers, usually in America and also I think in Russia as well, and especially US military, where they figured this stuff out, high voltage. And of course, you know, I have another idea which is basically charging metal or maybe charging certain rare elements, which you could potentially with high voltage static, uh, electrostatic, you could pretty much cause them to, I would imagine they would levitate. I think that's what uh, the Hutchinson effect is. Some kind of like uh, high voltage electrostatic uh, and, and then adding like radio waves and so AC power and like, you know, but it doesn't have to be AC. Uh, just, it can be, I think. So uh, basically, cause you think, okay, if you put electricity on a spectrum, electromagnetism on a spectrum, magnetism would be down the bottom. It's like physical, it's cold, it's earthly, and then high voltage is like up the top. Electro high voltage electrostatic is that is that like god force that you super positive energy, right? You would think lightness is a quality lift, levitation, lightness is a quality of hot air balloons, air, air, your helium, light air electrostatic or charging something like high frequency right this you would assume would cause some kind of levitation and another thing to think is that if you because people debate oh it's like oh well it's just air pressure it's like it doesn't matter you know what a, an airplane flies because it has the jet turbine they're actually Apparently, airplanes are using some kind of electromagnetic levitation. People have seen them float in air. And supposedly, um, a lot of jets are using... I don't want to speak too much because I don't want to get um, my head chopped off. But apparently, there's a lot of that. Which I think is probably why a lot of this stuff is not exactly public information and talked about too much. Because... As I said, most of the UFOs are probably just military craft, and the military doesn't exactly want their secrets being leaked. I'm not leaking any of their secrets, I'm simply just uh, figuring out science on my own, you know. This stuff has been researched probably, as I said, for about a hundred years already, if not more. The military has probably been doing serious research with this stuff for about 60 years, so I think it's a little bit, you know, it's time to maybe talk about some things of course i said i'm not looking up you know i don't work for the military i don't i don't know any secret information about them i'm not looking up any of their stuff i'm simply just uh understanding physics because it's kind of pretty obvious in my opinion about what all this stuff is and i think anyone who looks at it long enough is going to be like okay yeah i see it too going on if you had a platform with turbines just basically fans uh, a turbine is a fan essentially it's just a very uh, elaborate one you could levitate the platform right that helicopter is just a turbine you know a, a, a propeller uh, at the top of it right you could have a platform or, or a UFO it could be a UFO with a you know platform or it could be a, 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 a propeller whatever you know at the bottom at the top wherever that creates levitation. You're using something to spin, to push air, to create, technically, I would call that anti-gravity because what's the gravity? If gravity doesn't exactly exist. That's the one, that's the one to wrap your head around because everything, it's weight. Weight and buoyancy. Buoyancy essentially means uh, like the thickness of a medium. So it's the reason why stuff floats on water when it's full of like hot air or gas or you know usually air something or something light right because there's different mediums we're in the medium of air right usually and then weight things fall because of weight and of course geometry is does affect things as well uh why does a parachute work because its geometry is to essentially interact with the air in a certain way that it kind of like resists air and it resists you falling so it kind of stops you from 
pushing down as quickly, right? Or a glider, so geometry and weight and how they interact with buoyancy, right? So it's a bit like if hypothetically we couldn't go to outer space with a physical craft, then why should we care about what works in a vacuum? Do you get what I mean? As in, people debate, oh, well, it's just pushing air. But who cares? Why does that matter when? When are we going to be in a vacuum? Assuming that outer space isn't really a thing you can go to physically. Whether it is or isn't, I don't know. I have a hypothesis that you could probably um, vibrate a some a physical object so much, just coated in like high voltage electrostatic that maybe it can penetrate, you know, the the dome, so to speak. It's possible, I'm not sure. Uh, going on, so essentially, I think the more or less, the, you know, high voltage electrostatic is what they're using for these UFOs. Now, there's a lot of interesting ideas. It's like the Bob Lazar thing, where it seemed like they were researching UFOs that they didn't build. That's an interesting thing. Where did they get them from? Did they find them from the past? You know, were these built thousands of years ago? Were these from, are these from, you know, Antarctica or beyond or the North? It's all possible. Uh, and they seem to use, again, uh, high voltage electrostatic energy. That's kind of what I'm assuming and imagining. I think that is a place to start. And of course, understanding ionic wind, the electromagnetic uh, levitation and propulsion systems is key. Because if you could use a propulsion system to push up high enough, you can levitate. It's anti-gravity. So, well, it's not like true anti-gravity. As I said, that would be like the Hutchinson effect by, um, you know, charging something so much that it just it loses its weight but if you can push something far high up enough which i would assume these ufos are using both things they're being charged themselves but they also use a thruster or series of thrusters made from uh, made electromagnetically and then essentially humans and military and such, I don't want to go too much into it, have probably taken this technology and then integrated it into their aircraft, which is why there are those weird videos of uh, aeroplanes levitating or strange maneuvers from jets. I don't know if you've ever heard a jet. I heard one once and it sounds insane. The air, it, it goes through the air so quickly that it like tears it apart, essentially. Uh, it sounds like a, like a, actually there was a, it's like, a, actually no, it's, a, it's like, it's like this horrible ripping sound. Like it, like almost like a continuous explosion. You wonder what on earth it is. We can definitely say they are quite fascinating. And it's loud. I mean, like, it's so loud. Even if it is very far away from you, it just covers the entire area. I mean, I'm talking like probably kilometers, potentially tens of kilometers, even more in just this tearing explosion scene. It's, it's actually really, it's not nice. It's not nice to listen, it's pretty horrible. But that is what it is. So, yeah, I don't know. Is that just like turbine, gasoline turbine, you know, diesel turbine or whatever? They feel maybe methane or something. That they're using, or is it something else? I don't know. Of course, I've heard they charge, electromagnetically charge parts of it to, you know, have certain effects. As I said, potentially it could be anti-weight, 
potentially could affect the air differently you know how it moves into the air could help it to uh you know res uh, not resist but like just cut through it more i don't know and i don't want to speak too much on like that kind of stuff because uh again i want my head on my shoulders i'd rather just figure things out myself anyway that's let's go into some other stuff soon so the world of language is that of symbolization and usually we're symbolizing things or concepts now i've always held the idea that you can say anything you can put anything into language it's just it depends on your language skills the same way that you can draw anything it depends on your skill to you know visualize to draw etc if something exists you can symbolize it you can replicate it to some extent uh, or to a full extent depending on your, your abilities and your knowledge the computer is a world of symbolization and the computer used to be a very very low level uh, machine where there weren't any words it was it was it was just like electrical impulses it was like switches um it was lights you know it would, if you can if you can get a positive and negative or you can get like a bunch of switches or a bunch of lights you can symbolize reality through those right the same way we have a couple letters and these letters make words and these words make sentences and these sentences make um, entire explanations of things science is a good example of symbolizing things almost too far because you know real science is the kind of stuff that you do in you know, your shed your kitchen uh your backyard you know it's all done in a lab or whatever but we people look at you know science and they think uh data and all these graphs and all this like mathematics and words and nonsense of science no these are this is a symbolization for it you know science is the understanding of uh reality the physics of the world of different things right of the natural world but it's been so it's become so heavy with symbolization it brings an idea which is that you have to be careful of the symbolization maybe you're given a um like a sheet of paper at like at your work or some which says you, know, you have to do this this and that or like an engineering kind of diagram that says you know, this is what you're building and imagine if the symbolization is not very good you know the person who wrote it didn't explain it very good or very well or the pictures that they drew are not very you know clear they don't really elaborate right that's like an improper symbolization which is kind of what's happened to the scientific world uh, and it started really you can think with see latin um a lot of this information was kept in latin uh, a lot of writing in general was kept in latin you, know, you wanted to read things hundreds of years ago you had to learn latin even though maybe you were in somewhere like germany or, or like that that region um or england you know so you had the english language or you had the german language it would still be in the latin and you had to learn latin we have this issue where we, th we kind of as people we think that because something is in another language it's more special in the occult people think if it's in latin or in hebrew or even in chinese that it's more special and profound you know they think like oh it's, it's taoist you know it's more ooh, it's more special but ultimately it's a bit like chinese medicine is the symbolization of in you know, the body and health and medicine and such it's the chinese system uh, most countries or you know, regions and such will have their own systems of say medicine uh, science medicine is technically a science you'd think um, language in general they would have that and they would write these into uh, you know, they'd write books or they would, would you know, make 
diagrams or whatever, right? So they would symbolize things. And again, you've got to think that the symbol isn't the reality. They are similar and the better the symbol is, the more true it is to reality. And of course, now we have things like 3D modeling where you can create very elaborate symbols. Um, you know, if you've seen those like medical 3D uh, tools, <clears throat> I know they have some that, that are like virtual reality, you put on a headset and you like look through the body and you know, doctors will, um, some of them will use these tools, right? These are very elaborate symbols. These are very elaborate tools, representations um, of the body. And of course it is not the body. It is a representation of it. So if you want to really understand reality, you have to interact with it. You have to perform experiments on reality itself. Now, if you want to understand and learn how energy works, you have to work with energy. If you want to understand and learn how uh, material things work, like wood works, you have to learn to, you, know, you have to work with wood day in, day out. You have to you know, become a carpenter or practice carpentry, right? You will learn how to cook, you have to cook. And there's nothing wrong with reading about cooking or carpentry or, you know, whatever thing you might be trying to learn, right? Or you want to do. There's nothing wrong with speaking about it and communicating about it and making symbols and all these things. But um, we have to understand that these things aren't real, so to speak. They are representation. And the representations aren't always perfect. Now, of course, I'm happy we have computers. Computers, as I said, were first these very low-level things. Um, then they, they had keyboards and terminals, and then someone created the computer mouse and kind of brought it into, like, the third dimension. Um, and now we have pictures and, you know, Im and, uh, videos and uh, 3D modeling and uh, all these like you know fun things like games and, and whatever on a computer and we can symbolize reality and um, you know it's a, it's a really great it's a really great thing I think but ultimately this is the the world of you know civilization and the the real quote unquote the real world is um, you know, outside the screen now I, I'm, I'm kind of a person who you know I see the computer world as, as real in a way. It's just not, you know, it's the real world of symbolization, but it's not the real world of, you know, reality. Of course, it influences reality and it is a part of reality. The same way the sky is a part of reality. It's just, you know, you know what I mean, right? Because um, I don't want to devalue the, the internet and the power of it and the computer and all these things, but um, you know, it is, you know, it's a symbolic kind of hyper or meta reality, so to speak. So uh, usually when you read, just say you're trying to understand something, like especially as I said with science, because it's so bogged down with Latin and, um, and, and you know, complicated terms and, and all these things, you have to understand that the, the thing it's trying to explain is actually simple. It's just that it's explained in a really, really bad way, in a really, really complicated way, right? So you have to decipher what it's trying to tell you. And the better you become at language and deciphering symbolism, um, which is all kind of throat level and mind level stuff, the better you will be at uh, understanding this stuff and being able to just read something and learn. Because you're going to think, with the computer, we have this giant world of like this giant library where you can just read anything and understand so much. Uh, if you are willing to sit down and to read lots of stuff, you can learn so much stuff from the computer or from the library or whatever, you know, from books, from symbols. It's just that you need to convert it, kind of digest it, um, to make it real, to make it, you know, physical, like, like, you know, reality and understand what someone's really trying to say. 
instead of just like reading a bunch of words and looking at a bunch of diagrams and thinking, oh, this is very intellectual, this is very interesting, I don't really understand it. You know, you try to think like, what is it really saying? Even right now, when I am speaking to you, this is all symbolization. Words, again, as I said, are symbolizing, uh, symbolize, symbolize reality. I'm just giving you a bunch of symbolism of what I'm trying to say, uh, like analogies, so to speak. It's like I'm trying to give you my thoughts through my mouth, through my words, right? Through these symbolizations of um, these mental constructs of reality, right? So it's up to you to develop the skills to be able to process and digest what I'm saying. But ultimately, I think we need to start simplifying things to a greater degree. I think almost intentionally, um, especially a lot of scientific stuff is made complicated to kind of keep the mundane people out, which is stupid. I think it should be for everyone who wants to look at it, read it, understand it. <clears throat> and it's up to us to like make things simpler. Uh, and then I guess you just need to have a certain level of intelligence to interpret it. Oh, well, otherwise, you anyway, know, have a good day. Um, check the link's description for social commercial stuff if you want. And goodbye. I've seen like real energetic phenomena before, right? Uh, various times you'll see like balls of light and I've noticed that they are usually other people's thoughts um, or like mist so usually when I'm when you're kind of in like a dream state almost like like daydreaming or when other people um, are thinking about you then you'll just like on the corner of your eye which very strongly it's like a little portal actually one time I woke up and um, I was like gazing out into this like energetic portal and it was like it's being sucked back through so I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if, I, if I was like teleported and that's what like a dream is I don't know anyway I want to talk about um, auras because the aura that I have seen like really really seen I mean with my eyes has been that same kind of light, which is like a dull um, or, or a faint light, right? That's, that's what it is. It's kind of like a bioluminescence or, or light from the body. So in a couple of situations, I remember once a friend of mine was like thinking really hard about like programming and I saw this deep, dark blue color just kind of emanating from him. And I was like, wow, you know, that's crazy. And of course, I didn't say anything because, you know, I, I, I don't think many people believe me, right? And I guess it's just kind of like I was caught up in the moment. And um, it was because he was thinking very deeply and maybe dark blue was kind of his color. Uh, who knows? That was kind of like the, 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 the aura color he represented at that time, right? Um, and then next time I saw there was this... Uh, young lady who was like doing door knocking to to like for some kind of environmental cause or something and she was just spilling out like all of her you know her talk because i guess someone finally let her <laughs> let her talk and just said instead of saying no or something like that i don't know eventually i did say no because you know i don't want to give money to some random cause right and um i saw this green aura just just green light just come out of her and i was just like looking staring at that line i was like wow it was crazy and then eventually it just kind of popped back in you know like a snap back in um, and the last time I can really remember, like vividly remember, is um, this old fella that I was working with. I think he was getting really passionate. Um, I think we're talking about like the government, <laughs> now we don't, you know, like the, the, the traditions is anti-government, like, you know, talking about all the bad shit, right? And he was, he was going on about it, and I saw this white light come out of him, which is very interesting. I don't understand why he had a white light and what that means um the the blue light i could have easily understand that was thought you know if you think and also if you use light 
like you have a blue light, you know, that would probably make you smarter. The green light was like from the heart, right? I guess you would say it was like environmental, like, you know, passion and also social passion. I guess something like that, right? The white light, would that be from like the head? Like kind of divine, like very like high, high divine intelligence, like wisdom or something. I don't know. I'm sure most of us have had experiences probably seeing like red, you know, if you get really angry, you see red. Well, maybe you are actually like emitting red light. So, you know, and I'm sure as a child, I probably saw these more and saw people emitting them more. I just don't remember them. Uh, one thing I noticed is that if you are, if you're in like a fasted state or you're on any kind of um, like a stimulant, I don't recommend these things by the way, I don't recommend stimulants, I don't recommend fasting because it's just not really good for your health. You're doing it lots, you will see these more or if you focus on your eyes, because you, you can just focus on your eyes, but what I'm saying is if you're in like more of a spiritual state instead of a physical state, you will see this stuff more. Um, of course, I've had experiences like seeing rainbows on uh, certain things, let's just say. <laughs> it kinda, everything becomes rainbowy, but uh, I guess technically that would be auras as well, I don't know. But anyway, I just wanted to share that small ex those small experiences with you. Um, I guess notice it's whenever someone is in a moment of what you would, what you would call like ecstasy or um, high energy. Um, I'm sure it would happen during sex, for example, you know, like extreme passion. Maybe you would see like a pink color um, or, or it could even be a red or, or, or like an orange or you know, it could even be a green. I, I really don't know. Um, it would probably happen during like a play, like a theater play, I would imagine, or a musical performance, like a... Um, like if you were to see live music, I would imagine you would probably, if you, you know, if you look, you try to, you look at the space around people, it's where it's projecting from, and it's a kind of a dull color, but it is, you know, if it happens, it is, vi is visible. And again, I've only really remembered it those three times, but I've, I've kind of got, I feel like I've seen it more, but I don't know, I don't know, something to, to like keep your eyes open for. Most of the time people are like NPCs, so they don't really emit much light or aura or anything like that. So, you know, just kind of is what it is. Um, if anything, we're the probably, we're probably the people emitting the aura. So, you know, other people are like, maybe you'll get some stoner. Like I swear, there was some guy last night who was like uh, saying how like reflective and shiny and white my jacket was, and that's kind of when it like hit. So after after the hours of Scorpio, which is kind of when it becomes dark, then you hit head into what the areas of um to the 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 time of um like Sagittarius, I guess. That's kind of when things become a bit weird and people get start getting a bit weird. So if you've ever been out late at night, like you work at night, you notice there's a time where like the regular people who are getting food kind of go and then it's just like the weirdos. It kind of hit that point of night and then I was getting a lot of, you know, people like trying to talk to me and all that. And it's because they, they want that energy and they sense energy from you. And um, so the guy was saying like, I was so white, but I wasn't, that's the thing. Like I was not white, I was not in light. Like I was wearing um, you know, reflective clothing, but I wasn't in the light at that point. So there was no way, I mean, unless like, you know, light is a matter of angle and perspective. So maybe he was in a different angle and we saw it. I don't know. I think maybe he was just seeing um, my aura at that time because I was under a lot of like stress. So um, I was probably like giving off shitloads of energy because that's kind of what being anxious, anxiety, you're just, you're leaking energy. That's why it's not good to make like business deals when you or buy, buy stuff when you're you know, under anxiety, because you'll just, you'll leak, leak money. Anyway, that's enough for this one. Check the link in the description for social commercial stuff and have a nice day. I'm not a big eater of fast food, um, just because I simply don't really have the money. And also, I'm, it's kind of like, it's the food, fast food shops are so boring. Uh, you kind of have to go to like the bigger cities to get more interesting 
fast food joints otherwise it's like the most generic and like uninspired and uh kind of stuff here also seed oil is not so good but um if you really look at like you know things that are considered fast food or things that are considered unhealthy which you know nowadays it, they're trying to say like well you know for like the last probably even 20 years they're trying to say stuff like meat is bad uh dairy any kind of like butter you know it's all it's all seed oils now it's all margarines uh, they're trying to say lard butter is bad and milk and all that stuff and eggs so you're trying to say is bad right so it's all these natural things you've got to think milk butter yogurt eggs cheese meat bread vegetables that's the diet of you know the european person right that's what european people lived on and it did them well uh like soy based products is from china and you know the 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 excuse me, the asian region like soy milk and tofu is because they would grow you know like the soybean is actually a really incredible bean because uh, it's so high in protein and um you know it's high in nutrients and such so they would grow it there but in europe you know we had cows i think they had cows in asia as well uh, but it wasn't quite as common, you know, they would grow more soy and rice. Well, here we'd grow wheat and, you know, cows and pigs, um, chickens and such. They'd grow chickens and pigs as well in Asia and all that. So, um, but just to give you an idea, like, the, the, it's an attack on, like, a European-centric diet, right? It, is it actually, like, I'm not trying to bring a racial element, but it just happens to be that. Is it actually that it is like, you know, because, you know, the system is trying to attack uh, European ideas and such. Is it that? I don't know. That's not really the point of the video. The point of the video is that is fast food actually bad? Uh, is stuff like, like cake, we're going to talk about cake is a um, perfect example of a food. See, I think cake is like an ultimate food. I don't eat, I don't eat a lot of cake or anything, but um, just like from a th theoretical standpoint i think it's like a really really like like a high tier food because you okay so you mix what milk butter eggs like some kind of sugar or honey uh, and, and and like a flour like a wheat flour or some other kind of grain flour like these things are all high nutrient you know high calorie high fat high protein you know, like de well kind of decent amount of protein right this is all, it's just, it, it hits all of the macro nutrients and you know, some of the micronutrients, of course, depending on the quality of all the things will depend on the micronutrients, right? Like it just, it hits them all. Um, it's, that's why like bodybuilders would bulk off, they would bulk off pancakes, you know, they would bulk off um, high carbohydrate foods, right? So cake is like, incredible from a nutrient standpoint and that's what you do if you do a lot of exercise you have to eat like a lot of high calorie and high protein food just to get your energy back right uh, so going on you know why would cake be unhealthy why is it seen as an unhealthy thing it's because the like, excess amount of calories of course you know if you look like americans you know the fattest people in the world uh, i assume besides like maybe some tribe or something right they uh, they, it's said, well, they eat too many high calories, but of course there's debate whether it's actually the seed oil because, you know, people started getting fat after, what was it, like the 70s, the 80s or something? Like they started getting really fat, which is more, you know, when food started becoming very industrial and very um, fake. Now, I, I have noticed that if you, you do eat a lot of fast food um, and, and protein powder, you'll get fat. And if you don't do a lot of like movement, that's so, uh, you know, things like, like you can, I mean, that's the thing, the dairy, you, it's there to bulk up on. So protein powder, you know, milk, cheese, uh, uh, um, I mean, you'd have to eat a lot of cheese, but what does that like more milk and, you know, dairy, just dairy products, right? Butter and all that, it's there to bulk up on, which is, you know, sometimes you need to bulk up, right? Going on with like a, like a burger, that's a German thing, I'm pretty sure, the idea of a burger, which is just a sandwich. A burger is a sandwich, right? The most generic fast food was a burger and fries, or 
like a like a like a hot dog and like a you know, sausage and bread and I guess fries and like you know like a Coke right a, a, um, Coca Cola a soda no uh, a cola soda or some kind of like lemonade soda or something now if you really analyze these things a burger like a sandwich a meat it's just meat uh, cheese maybe bacon maybe some kind of vegetables some kind of sauces and bread none of these things are bad inherently. Uh, the bread becomes bad when it's like, you know, white bread that's not very, you know, overly processed or it's got bad additives in it. The sauces are bad when they have additives and seed oils in them. Uh, the cheese is fine as long as it's real cheese. You know, the bacon is, is well, depending, if, you know, the nitrate, like the preservatives of it. But otherwise, you know, there's nothing wrong with bacon, basically, if you don't eat it too much, um, preserved meats. And then the actual meat in there, again, as long as it doesn't have preservatives, should be fine. So actually, if anything, a burger would be a health food. You know, a burger is, is, is good for you if it's made properly. It's the additives, you know, the chemicals, the seed oils, um, the quality of the food that make it good or bad. Otherwise, if you make your own, it is a health food because it's full of nutrients, macro and micronutrients. It's full of protein and calories and, and fats, which are all good for you, and minerals and vitamins and such, right? Um, of course, if you if eat too much of it, it's going to be an issue, but if you eat too little of it, it's going to be an issue. But ultimately, you know, the idea of a burger, it would be good. Uh, sausage, you know, it's just meat filled in in the old days and filled in intestines. There's nothing wrong with that. That's good for you, right? In, if it's in good bread as well. And then you look at the fries. Uh, potatoes fried in oil. Now, the only thing you could really say wrong about that is maybe it's got a bit too much oil in it. Uh, of course, if you, if you, uh, you know, get it off properly or maybe too much depending on what kind of salt is used. Now, I think salt is good for you, like real salt. You know, sodium chloride, of course, is a refined chemical, uh, but like real, like sea salt, I use sea salt, I think is good for you, right? So, again, you would also think of the fries, there's nothing really bad about them. Debatably deep frying, if it's good or bad. I think it's deep frying's kind of... Um, See, a deep fried food is more like heart food or more more um, higher food because you know, it's high oil content. And then you think like soups and stews, like watery food, it's more lower food. It's more like, you know, kidney bladder kind of like salty stews and all that and soups. It's more like lower food, right? <clears throat> Uh, so there's different types of food. So you eat too much lower food, you become too low. If you eat too much high food, you become too high, right? I don't mean high as in like, uh, like a narcotic. I mean like uh, too much heart and liver energy. These things aren't inherently bad. Again, it's, as I said, the preservatives, preservatives and chemicals. Uh, it's the cooking styles, potentially, you know, how you cook something is can make something healthier or not usually more water is is usually better but then too much water is you know, well yeah and then of course the the oil used is very important i feel sick like physically ill when i eat um stuff deep fried in like you know canola oils and and such it's just not very, it's not good. Like my guts just want to get rid of it. And I just have to kind of sit there and wait for them to just process it out, right? It's not, it's not fun. Uh, what, what other fast foods in it? Like things like Chinese food or just certain Asian food, you know, Thai food, whatever. Uh, you get in like a plastic container. Of course, the plastic isn't great, but, um, you know, so that could be one aspect of bad health. Now, I think the MSG is really the bad thing. That's how you get that, that Chinese food syndrome. And um, then otherwise, it's just, it's the same thing. It's what preservatives and chemicals are in their sources, are in the noodles, you know, are in um, even the vegetables or the meat. Who knows? So it's really, it's not, there's nothing wrong with meat, vegetables, you know, carbohydrates, whether that be bread or noodles or potato or, you know, maybe corn wraps if we're talking about like, uh, South American food because there's floppy corn wraps, right? There's nothing wrong with all this stuff inherently. <clears throat> even even like a cola or a lemonade or a ras like a raspberry drink, you know, carbonation, of course, it's a positive thing, so it, it um it's gonna give you more positive energy than negative. It's not inherently bad. 
uh, a milkshake, you know, again, all these high calorie high, uh, dairy things, ice cream, milk, all this stuff, it's not bad for you. It's just if you have too much of it or if it's got additives in it, which as I said, when Americans started getting really fat or the whole world is when they started, um, if you look at something, look at the ingredients of something and look how like even the quote unquote natural thing, like it's full of seed oils and full of all these industrial fillers. It's actually disgusting how like these companies treat people because again, they're probably eating their own food and maybe they don't care or don't even know um, that they're just kind of filling it full of junk or who knows. Really, if you analyze all these food products, yeah, as I said, these are made from things, uh, you know, meat, uh, vegetables, plant pr plant products, and uh, well, that's pretty much it. You know, <laughs> food is all just made out of animal and vegetable products, and then the mineral would be the salts and such, right? One other thing, final thing you got to think about is the energy that people are putting into food. Don't go to like a, a restaurant that gives you a bad vibe. The people give you a bad vibe, or the people are mean to you, like the, the chefs and all that. Um, if if you kind of hear like bad conversation in the kitchen, or you don't really vibe with the people working in the kitchen, don't eat from there. You're not gonna, because again, that energy is going into the food, whether you want to believe that or not. So it's gonna kind of affect it. Um, but yeah, hopefully this gives you some idea on these things, because I've you know I've always thought about that, it's like. What really is, what is health, you know, what is good, what is bad when it comes to food? And uh, we don't want to be those people that are like, it's like the natural health people that aren't actually very healthy. You know, like they're really skinny, they're really pale, they're just, they're not very, like that. They, they don't have a sex drive. Those people aren't good, cause usually because they're like a, like a vegan uh, that eats like a lot of, you know, really artificial, really chemically, like industrially made things you know, if you want to be healthy you know meat and dairy and, and, and like just animal products is essentially the best thing uh plant products are nice but they're just not as like nutrient dense as animal products so you won't be quite as healthy of course you want to get both but anyway that's about enough have a good day and check the link in the description for social commercial stuff if you want and goodbye I also thought I should add the way you specifically cook things will add to its either healthiness or lack of that. You know, a lot of people talk about like raw foods and that's nice some of the time, but usually raw foods were still salted. They were cured. Like if you look at a ham or a bacon, that's, you know, brine and salt cured. Um, or vinegared, <clears throat> or somehow the the issue I guess I see you know go ahead if you want to try it out yeah. but um when you cook something you do you do kind of uh, what would you say loosen up the nutrients you know you you kind of mature it or you just the heat and usually the water it, it helps to um, make it a more digestible form. And you can find deliciousness is, I think, a quality of nutrients, um, which is why you can make, you know, flavor enhancers of organs, for example, because they've got so many nutrients in it. You wouldn't really think so because, you know, you eat the liver and it's like, oh, that's awful, but you can make a flavor enhancer because it's, you know, you've got so many nutrients and minerals in it. Uh, if you think if you fry the absolute crap out of something, it's going to lose nutritional value and it's going to become unhealthy. You know, if you if you get some bacon and you just completely fry it to a crisp, I don't, it's nice to eat crispy bacon, I know, but um, but really, really crispy. You know, you've got to think like you're eating something that's just like solid protein, uh, like a solid crisped block of something. You know, you're gonna to have to really chew it well and mix it with water or something to, to kind of get it to um, turn into mush to digest. So yeah, it's just something to think about is the way you cook it, like steaming something. Um, you know, they, they would say you would you would lose the nutrients through the steam or and it would go into the water and you know, then you have that, that water at the bottom that um Pretty much the rule of thumb is just to not overcook the crab out of something. You know, don't burn something. Once you burn something, it's um, 
It's not very good to eat, I guess.